I'm gonna go ahead and pre-record some content for my YouTube um, and then I'm gonna post it it's probably gonna be available tomorrow if anything because it's quite late but you know how it goes I gotta tell my story I'm gonna tell my story in its entirety and I don't I don't care how long it takes so I didn't even put a title on this video however I gotta talk about this I really have to talk about this because people really 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 try to destroy my life people really try to destroy my life and at the very least I gotta talk about it I gotta let the whole world know the real story so I don't even know where to begin with this video but you know I was just watching um, a reading and um, I remembered something that I had specifically to talk about and I said let me do it now before I forget so I want to talk about what actually happened here now there are some parts of this story that I can say let me turn this down there are some parts of this story these videos because I meditate a lot so these videos just randomly come on these uh, relaxing music videos which I do enjoy but um let me turn my timer on so I can see how I don't want this to be too long so I'm gonna call this video Mercedes Benz maple that's what I'm gonna call this video and I'm also gonna add some other stuff in there as well because people need to take accountability for the shit that they did they need to take accountability for what happened period so I'm gonna go into I'm gonna go into see now I'm doing the video it's 11 45 I'm getting texts at this hour nothing's gonna fucking stop this from coming out I want to talk to so let me let me first start Mercedes-Benz Maple if you go into their reviews online is one of the most racist places and that's not even coming that's coming from all kinds of races that constantly complain about this dealership they go in and out of general managers but this was my home dealership this was the dealership I was supposed to buy my car from but because of how unsavory the customer service was I end up buying it at an outside dealership instead okay the gentleman that I had an issue with his name is Kai and I actually have text messages from this man literally dragging me as a customer as a paying customer saying I never wanted to work with her to begin with etc etc because he did a search on a car and I didn't buy a car for that reason. They have a uh, driver, the black one, who's a pervert, who just does whatever he wants. Like they know that this guy is probably going to land them in a lawsuit at some point or the other and they think it's funny. Everything over there is so unprofessional and I can say this without fear of anybody saying anything because if they ever try to take any action there would be so many freaking people who would be like who would agree with it like if this were to ever make like a blog there would be so many people in the comment section talking about how shady this dealership is that's why their sales are in decline like people go other places instead so anyway put a pin in that i go there I used to go there to get my car looked after like just the tech department because the one tech that was there I never had an issue with he was always very kind he was always very honest so what I mean by that is if I went there and there was some issue say for example a tire got punctured he would just tell me he'd be like you know what 
let's try to see if we can patch it or let's try to see if there's a way to get like maybe a used tire or something like let's see a way if we don't have to get you to spend a thousand dollars so i used to go there because of him ended up going there one day when he wasn't available um or he wasn't at work that day i cannot remember the name of this other tech he's the other asian one the young one he comes and he sits down, he talks to me and he's like, you can see some things on his heart, some things on his chest. This is in the summertime. And he sits there and he says to me, he's like, you know what? My wife and I were having these feelings about like, um, you know, there's something that we're a part of and we know that we're facing karma as a result of it. And you know, we know that we have to make a change, but you know, it's very scary. I know exactly what he's talking about. He's a part of this fucking cult. I know exactly what he's talking about. I know exactly what he's talking about. So as I told you guys on pre in previous videos, people cannot just come out and tell you this. I, I don't know if they're sworn to secrecy or if they're just terrified for their life or who knows what. But he's sitting there earnestly looking me in my face. And, you know, I'm kind of talking to him and I'm like, look, this is not going to be easy. It will probably be like the hardest thing that you've ever gone through in your life. Um, it will be a challenge, but you have to do what you have to do. And he's telling me, well, he's like, you know, well, we're having money problems and things are happening and he doesn't go into specific detail but he's essentially like going around it like just basically saying um they're having issues and they want to have another baby and now's the time to have the baby but they, they kind of don't want to do it now because of money etc 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 and i'm talking to him and i'm like listen you gotta trust god and i'm like i'm like you know you don't know you know, who is or what forces are pushing you to make this decision in your life right now. Like if you're even considering it or thinking about it, you got to do what you got to do. Like just get out of there. He looks at me, he nods. He's like, yeah, I agree with you, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, and what I came for didn't even actually happen. I got my tire punctured and that's when I ended up going in the dealership. Um, my, like I said, my tires were stabbed constantly. I was constantly having tie flat tires on a very brand new, beautiful car. So the tire is an issue. I didn't get the tire done that day. I must have came the next day or the day after that. Had to come back. Literally, not even like a week later, not even a week later, I stepped back foot in the dealership and I wasn't even inside and a man drives up to my car and goes, I want to buy that car. And I was like, you're at Mercedes, go inside and go check out a car. No, I want that one specifically. He turns to the man and he looks at the man with a sinister smile on his face. And he goes, yeah, 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 we're working on that. I just spoke to you the other day. And now today you're, you're helping people to buy my car. What jurisdiction? So imagine going through life like this for an extended period of time. These people were contracted to destroy my life, take away my home, stop my business from making any money, incurring any income. They blocked all business and all sales from me in Toronto, period. Stopped my money, stopped everyone that I can work with. And everybody is involved. Like so many people are involved right now in this shady thing that I bet they couldn't even find all the witnesses if this shit went to court. Like that's how bad it is. Like that's how many people. For, for someone to be so soulless, like even my neighbor, like people that see you drive your kids to school and whatnot, like they want to put you in foreclosure. And I don't know what kind of payouts they get 
once they recruit you into the drug muling that makes them no longer view you as a human being and makes them so deranged and makes them kind of look at people like cattle these people wanted to annihilate me and destroy me completely like to the point that they're still holding on like any like i'm trying to do business with people in the states and go to bravo con and all that and they're contacting the influencers threatening these people in the states to work with me threatening people like doing everything they can to block my path hacking my emails and basically contacting people that that i've made agreements to work with to try to block me in every way john ferreira i am fucking coming for you bro like you're not getting away with this if you think i'm gonna lay this sword down you're crazy one way or the other we are hunting you down if the fucking police and the courts don't take care of it my fucking people will take care of you and they are taking care of you and we're not done until you're out of here period this man tried to destroy me. I don't know this gentleman from, gentleman is actually a stretch. I don't know this animal, this human animal from a hole in the wall. I don't know this man from anywhere. We have nobody in common. We're not even in the same age bracket. Nothing. This is why they have to try to get in touch with you through dating sites so they have an excuse of like how they know you. If you think there's a way that you could possibly manifest me back in your life, you, you keep manifesting demons back in your life and you don't even know that. I will never stop praying on your downfall. I'm posting this video and I'm titling it Mercedes Benz Maple and I'm tagging them and I'm hashtagging it. And I will continue doing so until I expose them one by one so that you fucking understand that you don't get to go around destroying people's lives. You don't get to go around making oaths, making pacts, making contracts with the fucking cartel to recruit people to be drug mules. You wanted to take my house from me. You wanted to take my condo from me. You wanted to take my vehicles from me. You wanted to take my business from me. You wanted to take my life and my health and my children from me. How much of your life do you have left? John Ferreira of Automotive Techniques. And now you guys changed the business name to something Manzuko another fraud organization 50 years in the make what 50 years in the making it was just automotive techniques a couple months ago yeah you're not getting away with it mm -mm. you're not getting away with it everybody has you to blame not just for people's lives that are now coming crashing down but there's more. I know there's more you did. If you were so bold, because you were emboldened, you were confident that you could take me down. So you stopped using common sense. You, you had no precaution because you were so sure that this was going to work. Right? That you just threw caution to the wind. You guys were doing it boldly. Mercedes Benz is not going to survive this. You guys are not going to survive what you did. I don't care what anybody is talking about. I don't care. If things go to court, I'm not selling out of court. I'm going to drag it through fucking court because the stories must be told. Witnesses must be put on the stand. People need to be subpoenaed. It is going to be the manifestation of your worst fears. You're money hungry. You overeat. You're envious. You're the most envious person I've ever met in my life. You and Daisy are the most envious people I've ever experienced in my life. I've never experienced people who cannot say a single positive thing about anybody in their life. You complain about your brother. You complain about your wife. You complain about everybody you know you've dragged through the mud. Every fucking person that you know you've dragged through the mud every single buddy you've never said a nice thing about anyone friend or not
family or not, your parents, whoever, you will sit there and you will talk about your so-called people who came to work for you. You're greedy. You're horrible, horrible something in the shape of a human being because you're not a human being at all. And it's absolutely insane to me that in a whole business like Mercedes Benz, like it's a mom and pop shop would be one thing, but Mercedes Benz Maple, all of you guys deserve lawsuits. All of you guys. I took my vehicle there so many times on my vehicle. I kept saying my tires have been stabbed. And it took me taking the, the car to another dealership for them to say, yeah, your tire is blatantly stabbed. Like, this is horrible. Like, this is not even just a little stab. Like, this was done with vengeance. Now, how does my tire get stabbed when my freaking car is in my garage every night? You've crossed the line. Nasser, that lives next door. All those people that live in the neighborhood, the people whose children used to come outside and race to our house every time we would try to go outside to take a picture before we went out. All those kids that used to try to make us feel intimidated. People were sending their actual children outside to make us feel intimidated. All those people you contracted as their lives fall apart and they lose absolutely everything. They're going to be publicly humiliated as well and no one will have anybody but yourselves and especially you to blame i'm gonna continue making sure i tell everybody what type of fat insecure all this guy does is sit down and show you the pictures of when he was 700 pounds and tell you about the girls that refused him in high school why does somebody want to date someone who's 700 pounds why do you think that someone has to be attracted to you as you're overweight? As you're not taking care of yourself. The same way you don't take care of yourself mentally, spiritually. You don't take care of your energetic body. You're a monster. You're horrible. You're unlikable because you're evil. You're manipulative. You're a liar. You're irresponsible. And you put people's lives in danger. Everybody who comes around you suffers a major loss, if only one major loss. You're irresponsible and you put everybody's life in jeopardy by even coming at me. Now, I got time. It's only 18 minutes. Um, You knew very well this was never going to work. This guy knew this wasn't going to work. Let me tell you why this guy knew it wasn't going to work. This guy is a Satanist and a spiritual doctor. He's a spiritual practitioner. He's a spiritual hitman. He's, play, he's paid to unalive people. That's what he's actually paid for. I'm going to expose this little monster. He's paid to unalive people. When he comes around, people die. That's what he does. He does voodoo. He does spell work. And he's a liar. He's a professional liar. You didn't know there was a thing, but yeah, he's a professional liar. So he can come around, get information about you, and then he starts slandering you to destroy your business, your reputation, and everything. Neighbors disappear, friends disappear. Where he'll make up lies. I wouldn't be surprised if he said anything about me. Nothing at all. He'll make it up out of thin air. It, it doesn't even have to match your personality. He'll just make it up. So in the beginning, when this first started, I'll show you how money hungry and irresponsible this guy is. This guy caused me and my ex to break up. My ex ghosted me. They came to the store. They took pictures of me. They slashed my tires. My ex ran off. Fine, right? My ex is probably like, you know what? This is not worth this girl and her kids going through. Let me get out of here. Fine. So he does all that. Right after his wife leaves him. She doesn't even leave him in a normal way. She literally allows him to think that they're moving out of her parents' house. First of all, what type of grown man in his 40s is going to move into a woman's house? What type of a grown man in his, excuse me, in his 40s is going to live with a woman in her parents' house? Like, can't move her out of the house. Out of the house, sorry. A loser. I don't even know a normal man that wants to live in a woman's house much less in her parents house he's a gold digger 
He's a gold digger. He leeches off of women. He leeches off of people. That's what he does. He doesn't contribute anything. She made him think that they would move out of the house. Let him pick up. Let him pick up. He's talking about, oh, she didn't even care. She let me buy all the furniture. She let me pick everything out. Dropped him over there with the younger kid and took off with the older kid who clearly looks like the kid's not his. I don't know if she led him to think the kid was his, but it was pretty obvious to me the kid wasn't his. I don't know what the story is. Meets me on a dating site, has no interest in dating whatsoever, just wants to know all my personal business, where I am, like what I'm buying for lunch, hacks me, hacks everything I have, tries to be my handler as he's recruiting me and lives with another woman, becomes obsessed with me and now the woman that he's supposedly living with has issues with me as if I actually have anything going on with this maniac. I probably stay in contact with this idiot for maybe like two weeks Never met, actually met him after, met him after I was so hacked. All my devices were getting hacked and I showed up to his business. I was like, yo, what did I do to you? What is going on? What's happening? And the worst part about this is this has happened to so many people. A bunch of the women that came to my store have all been victims of the same thing have all been victims of the same thing. I've had people purchase from me that have come with their handlers. And the the way the handler is like manipulating them and controlling their money and controlling their mind, you would think that they're together and you address the man as like their husband and their or their boyfriend and the man's like, I'm not with this person. And you're like, what? So if you're not with this person, like why do you have this like, this is more than like a friendship. Like, what is this? And that's what he tried to have with me or, or over me. He tried to have a situation where it's like, I'm not with this person. This person's my friend, but it's like some blurred line situation where it's like, I control them. You're a fat, old, whatever the hell you are, ugly, don't, he stinks. Why would I, as like a normal person, what? It doesn't even make any sense. It doesn't even make any sense. Like, get away from me. And because I ghosted this guy, this guy has tried to destroy my life in every way. Destroy my business. Destroy my engagement on Instagram. Like, a hundred percent. Like, to the point it was so bad. Like, if a customer came into my store, they would, they had gang stalkers sitting outside my store all the time. So if a customer came into the store, they'd run into the store after the customer to try to stop the customer from purchasing. It's the craziest things I've ever seen in my life. And I'm not letting it go. I'm not letting it go for the rest of my life. I'm not letting it go. I don't care what anybody has to say. He told people I was a witch because of the, the kind of crap that was starting to happen in his life. If I have to be a witch, then so be it. If I have to be a devil worshiper, so be it. I'm not going to be like the other people whose lives they've destroyed. Right now, they're bullying people just to like my pictures. They don't know which way to go. Like, I'm sure these girls are so sick of it because it's like one minute they're telling people not to come to my page. The next minute they're forcing people to like pictures. They don't know what to do with themselves. They're unearthing people from like freaking 15 years ago to try to come back to be friends with me, to try to come back to be around me. It's crazy. Everybody like so many people are my customers like I have customers that don't even follow me like so many people know my business and these people have said whatever it is that they said to destroy my business and they think that I'm gonna lay back like he's not satisfied because I'm stable still like I'm still stable even my realtor selling my house right now is an op that man fought so hard to try to get me to sell my house under value. Without them even caring that what my house sells for impacts the rest of the neighborhood. 
they could care less. They just want me to be able to say, she doesn't have her nice car. She doesn't have her big house. She doesn't, things that I've worked extremely hard for, they want to take out of my hands as if they're the ones that gave me what I have. And I'm relaxing. I'm relaxing. And that should be the most frightful part of anybody who's ever been a part of this. If you ever came to my store to purchase something under any type of nefarious type of sort of intentions, your life is going down in a blaze. I don't care what y'all talking about. I could say whatever I want to say. I could say whatever I want to say because what's anybody going to do to me for saying that I'm wishing on your downfall? Not a goddamn thing. I could do that if I want to. And I'm at a point that I could do that. I am at a point where I could do that. I've been quiet for a year. I've been quiet for a year. It's been crazy. It's been a rocky ride. If anybody went through this, y'all don't last three weeks, actually, when you guys go through this. Y'all don't last a month. As soon as they start coming around you guys, you guys are so greedy. Oh, let's go on a private jet. You guys are on the private jet. Boom, now you're in the fucking cartel. Oh, let's go do this. Th boom, you're doing it. Now every six weeks, you got to go to Jamaica with a suitcase. Now every six weeks, you got to be in ZR on so-called vacation. How many vac solo vacations you're going to take to Cali, Colombia before it kind of looks suspect? Where are you getting money for a private jet? Do you know how much private jets cost? Let's be very clear. And this is and and th these people really thought they were gonna get me. They were gonna get me. Yeah, because they they misinterpreted. They use spell work. They really misinterpreted who I am. They really just misinterpreted. You know who I am, actually. What I'm like. You know, in Men in Black, there's that scene. I think it's the first or the second one. There's that scene, maybe, maybe the third one. There's that scene where Will Smith, no, it's the first one. He's a young agent. There's that scene with Will Smith and all the agents. And there's, they're, they're asking them like, which, what is suspicious about this dark alley, right? And so in the dark alley, there's all these aliens. And there's like, it's like 2 a.m. or 5 a.m. in the morning, something like that. And there's aliens like hanging off the light posts and there's like all of this stuff. And then there's the little girl who's like three or five years old with like the, the university level textbooks. And Will Smith's standing there and everybody's like shooting at the aliens or whatever. And he shoots at the little girl. And they go, why did you shoot at this little girl? And he's like, first of all, what's a kid doing in the alley at that time of night? Secondly... What is she doing with these university level textbooks? I always thought of myself that way. Because people come around me and they start underestimating me because I'm the girl who's not around a lot of people. I'm not outside. I'm not on the scene. I'm different. I'm, I don't talk to a lot of people. So it's like I'm isolated, right? And I just work really hard and I do my thing and I keep to myself. So these people really thought perfect target we're gonna come we're gonna rape her of everything that she has everything that she's worked hard for and we're gonna put her in a box if we cannot get her on the plane we're gonna put her in a box this is what they thought and they never thought to themselves how is she doing this there's no husband there's no there's not a lot of people around her and she's she's doing better than me actually i have to lie and steal and scam and destroy lives to make a living i have to depend on other people and this girl continues to climb the ladder by herself how's she doing this that's the first question he should have asked himself before he came at me he should have thought this thing through and then he should have asked himself, how comes everything that they try to do to me was happening to them? Like Daisy, the prostitute, used to bring me 
food under the guise of being a friend and bring me flowers to my business and all this stuff and then she started having infections that she couldn't clean up and then she started gaining the weight that I was supposed to gain and all this kind of bad stuff so these people knew from day one these people by the time these people started coming at me God already shot off one of their feet they were limping they were hopping on one leg towards me they knew and he was so money hungry, he still took the money anyway. By the time this man came to my store in December, this man looked like he was either on drugs or on medication. Mental medication, one of the two. Because what he said to me out of his own mouth, everything that's happening in your life is happening in my life. I wasn't on drugs. So it wasn't happening in my life. It was just happening in your life. Your life is a circus. Now, I don't know how this man thinks he's going to untie himself from this situation because, you know, all that's happened in all of this time is I've just gotten spiritually stronger. This man went and binded himself to an entity. I know he paid money for it because you don't just get it. You, just, you don't just... It's, it's not like... It's not like you're just possessed because you're possessed. It's like you need this possession. Like this is for your help. This is a protection. You had to buy protection. You didn't have spiritual protection. We got rid of that early. I took that off of his ass early. What ancestors took that off of him early? He knew that. He knew that. He knew that. Okay. So you have no protection. And on top of having no protection, you want to bought protection. Experience what it was like to have the gifts of that. Now you have no gifts. Now you got to get back to your kitchen magic. So you're binded and you have no gifts. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that wild? Yeah, the fake pages can come. I love when the fake pages come because it just further proves my point. He can't help his, his fat ass self. You've been sending some work all night and it hasn't worked. So you got to come in the comment section. Keep exposing yourself. Keep talking. We could argue tonight. Let's go. Because that's what you want. Let's go. You need that attention. You've been desperate. You have no self-control. I admire how well you have done thus far. I admire it. Let's go click on the page. Let's see if this is a real page. Let's go see if this up. Oh, of course, it's not a real page. You could sit here and you could watch. You could go ahead and sit and you could watch. I thought you wanted to reset my phone. Isn't that what you did last time? You can't do it this time again? You can't reset the phone mid-live? Why is a fake page asking me who I'm talking to if what I'm saying is not real? Huh? Make it make sense. Make it make sense. All right. Anyway, binded himself to an entity. Binded himself to an entity just so I could get all the gifts. Thank God I waited too. You remember what I told you in the beginning of the year? Do you remember what I told you? I told you I was going to take all your gifts if it was the last thing that I did. Do you remember that? Oh, okay. I told you if it's the last thing that I do, I was going to take every gift that you have from you. You have no protection. You can't see nothing that's going on. You can't do nothing. Not to me anyway. You know that. Not to me. You could fight yourself in wherever it is that you live for now. If you're managing to live somewhere and you're not on the streets yet, you could fight yourself in there. While those dark forces that live with you fight you too. Oh yeah, you thought I didn't know? How many times did they beat you up in there? You know, I was at home reading, reading my Bible. I'm not even going to lie. I was reading my Bible that night. And they were taking turns on you like fight night. You remember that? Yeah. 
You remember that. You can't forget that. They put hands and feet on you. You all remember that? I know you're mad at me. I know you're mad at me. I know you can't stand me. I'm not done with you. You came for the wrong one. See, he hopped off the live. Why he hop off the live for? Why you hop off the live for? Don't let me send no... Listen. Let me tell you something. I tell you guys, you gotta talk to God. You gotta talk to God. You gotta move with angels. That man doesn't sleep at night because he can't sleep at night. If that man starts falling asleep, you see how he made the little funny faces and whatever? He feels far from that. He's shaking right now. He's having anxiety. His anxiety has been going on for months. It's uncontrollable. It's uncontrollable. He might as well have Parkinson's the way he has anxiety. It's debilitating. Don't come for people. People like to come for people and they end up coming for the wrong person. That man wanted me to be afraid of him so bad because everybody's supposedly afraid of him because he's the witch doctor. He's the man you pay when you want to destroy somebody, right? That's who he is. He has to come under fake pages. Girl, who are you talking to? Who are you talking to behind a fake page? Yeah. That man wanted me homeless. That man wanted me like the worst things you could think about. And they're racist too. Like this is the part that I don't get because black people are predominantly the people that they target for this stuff and they're racist as hell. So how do they see us exactly? How do they see us? He wants so badly to cuss me out, but he can't. He can't because it'll expose his hand. See how he had to run off the live? And he does this all the time with fake profiles. Oh, listen, listen, they can't do nothing to me. I am the problem. It's going to come to the point, you know, just for people's privacy, I don't reveal the people in our community, the girls our age that they've put into this stuff. People that we all know. Influencers. Just girls that are out and about that we all know that are trapped. And some of these girls, I'm telling you, when I read their energy, I know that. Honestly, I feel like they're happy that I didn't go down. Not because it's me who didn't go down, but at least like one of us didn't. Like it gives them hope in some way to know that not everybody, like at least there's somebody still standing because they're scared. People who I used to see in a, in a party, in a dance, who used to give me a big hug. Hey, Can, how are you? Are scared to work with me, scared to join my life, scared to come around, scared to do anything with me out of nowhere. Like they're not allowed. And it's like they want to watch my life. So they'll watch a little bit of it, but they have to hop out really quickly. DJs. DJs that have a relationship or rapport with for years, MCs, people that I know for years, have relationships with for years, are not allowed to work with me at all. Excuse me. And I really think it's been Peter Pay for Paul in regards to working with me in or in regards to the fact that they couldn't take me down i feel like they've just been making people suffer They're, they've just been making people's lives like a living hell like oh can likes you or you worked with her because it's like i'm looking at people's page and there's no engagement whatsoever and it's like i know this is a person who's popular i know this is a person who's well known i know this is a like listen there's a difference between being internet popular and like really having a following like being influential there's there's a difference there are people who just know people like the whole city knows them versus people who it's like they just have engagement online because people want to see what they're doing next like there's people people actually love and i'm looking at their engagement and their engagement is zero because of this lunatic and this man is i'm not gonna say he's not wrapped up too tightly he's unwrapped 
He's unwrapped. I know he hates me. He can't do a goddamn thing. He can't do nothing. He started off and he had a lot of friends in quotation marks because people don't really like this guy. He had a lot of friends. He had a lot of help. He had a lot of everything. Now he has to he has to fight me by himself. He has to fight me by himself. Yeah. Nobody's coming to help you. My name that you destroyed in Toronto, I don't really care. Fuck Toronto. Straight up. It is what it is. I actually really never really cared for this city anyways. Nobody really who lives in Toronto really gives a shit about Toronto because everybody in Toronto hates everybody in Toronto. You guys don't know how to get along. You guys don't know how to build anything together. Even people from the States come down here, from everywhere, come, and they're like, what's wrong with you guys? Why do you guys behave like that? The whole city has obia or something on it. Nothing is okay with this place. It is what it is. And you know what? I'm glad I'm the person that just says what everybody's thinking. I, I'm glad. Because it should be said. And I think everybody already knows that anyways. People have been saying that. You guys are hell in this place. It doesn't matter how nice a person is, how decent of a human being they are, what they do for you, or anything like that. You guys are just... You guys will tear each other down. Just tear each other apart. And as soon as somebody starts getting a little something going for them, here comes the wolves to try to like rip them apart in this place. People have to leave the country. Leave the country to become anything. Do you know how many careers these people destroyed? You know, maybe I've just been the one that's been out of the loop myself. And I just never knew that this existed. Because it kind of seems like low-key everybody kind of knew. It see listen, let me tell you, eh? It's not everybody that gang stalked me that I'm mad at. It's not everybody. There were girls that it was very obvious that they were bullied. Very obvious. Like you could see in the way that they came around that they just didn't want to be there at all. You could see in their whole demeanor that they did not want to be there. It's like they were being forced. Like people were just like kissing their teeth and cussing that they even had to be there. So clearly, and, and those are were usually, not usually, because there are some black people that were disgusting. There were some black people that I was like ashamed I was like, I can't even believe you came in here with so much battery in your back, so much strength to do this. This is terrible. Look at you. You guys always say, oh, we need representation. We need people to like, you know, we need to see ourselves in places. And somebody gets in a place and you start behaving like that. And then you know what? I have respect for the people who it was kind of like they can't help. They can't do anything. Their hands are tied, but they don't want any participation in it. And they made it known to me in the way that they came around that they didn't want to participate in anything. They made it known to me. Like, they didn't come with any like, ha ha ha, kiki ki, if that's what they told them to have. They came around in such a way where it's like, I'm not going inside. I'm not, I'm, I'm standing outside. I'm not going in there. Like, or they had attitude or they were like kissing their teeth or like, they couldn't wait to walk away or whatever. I have respect for you guys. So when I say <clears throat> that the people who try to do this to me have to suffer, I'm really not talking about people who were forced. I'm really not talking about people who really didn't feel like they had a, had a choice. I sympathize. I sympathize with those kinds of people. I really do. But I could tell the difference. Like... It wasn't everybody. Even when I say, oh, you know, like a lot of them are Hispanic. It wasn't everybody. There were some Hispanic people. Like, listen, there was this one Hispanic lady that came to my store in Oakville and she was standing outside the store and she refused to look inside the store. She just refused. And she said, and she was on the phone. She's like, why do I have to be here right now? I do not want to be here right now. This is not something that I want to do. I think there were people who remembered when it happened to them and they just couldn't bear to see it happening to somebody else. I truly did believe that and I felt that in my soul. They just didn't feel like they wanted to be a part of this happening to someone else because there were girls, like there's one particular girl I remember and I was talking to her about the whole dating site situation 
and she was like, she couldn't say to me, she couldn't say anything to me, but she was just looking at me like, and I was like, what do you mean? She's like, and she just left. Like she, I, I don't even think she took her change. I remember she ran off and she just grabbed her bag and she left. Like she was just looking at me like, like silently communicating with me, like that dating app thing. Like these people were hunting me down to get into my, and they're doing it now still. They're trying to find any ex-friend, anybody that they could find that is going to agree to like try to come close to me, love bomb me, come around in my energy again, try to be close to me so that they could finish. The job will never be finished. You will never get me on no plane, bro. What are you not understanding? Like you'll never get me on a plane. You know all we're doing right now? At first, I was like, God, why is this going on for so long? Like, to me, this should have already been done. But, you know, I know how God works. He knows. He knows the end is, is almost here. The fact that I'm on video right now and I'm posting all of these things, he knows. He knows. He can't control himself at all. All he leaves is paper trails of his sloppy work hacking people being on people's computers he'll just reset factory reset my computer restart my computer do all kinds of stuff i don't i don't see anything i'm chilling because everything has to happen by his own hand so i have to let him operate i let i have to let him do what he's doing telling people i'm a dark witch like let me tell you if anybody in toronto uses their common sense and they've been forced into the drug trade in any way and then you hear that a dark witch is taken a slaughtering the people that have you in slavery. Do you think you care if they're a dark witch or not? Do you think you care if, they're, if it's a dark witch that's taken out the people that are making your life a living hell? Do you care? I know I wouldn't. I would be at home like, like Mimi from Love and Hip Hop when Jocelyn was beating up Stevie. I'd be like, get him again get him do one for me yeah i'm doing one for you listen when this when when people see this man he has to be unrecognizable he doesn't need a place to live for what he doesn't need food to eat for what he doesn't need nothing he doesn't need nothing death is stalking him the way he stalked me i'll tell you that much I don't care what they call me. They could call me whatever the... They could call me what they want to call me. They could call me what they need to call me. He's terrified. As he should be. He should be terrified of me. I'm not playing no games with nobody. Okay? Be very careful if you follow me. Anybody that follows me is catching it. Anybody. And these videos will not stop. I don't care who you are. One thing about God... Your money doesn't mean anything to God. Y'all need to start understanding that. Money means something to people here on earth. God doesn't care about you having money. God doesn't care about your skin color. God doesn't care about none of that. You violate. You violate the wrong people. God will drain that money fast. Money is even an illusion to me. It's an illusion. You you didn't Kanye have hundreds of millions and then was bankrupt? Oh, okay. And this happens all the time. I don't care what he's talking about. He lost his job. He's excommunicated. He's not the only one that's going to be excommunicated by the way. I'm just telling you right now. He's over there in his little kitchen panicking, doing the most. These prayers have been sent up to heaven a long time ago. So I'm seeing the manifestations of things from a long time ago that are happening now. We got a long way to go. We got a long way to go. And I'm doing it for every... I'm not just doing this for me. This is for everybody these people ever played with. This is for everybody whose lives these people stole because they stole people's lives they steal people's lives if god intended for you to be a famous soccer player now you're fucking mewling drugs 
If God intended for you to be, you know, the next Beyonce, you have talent. Now you're in and out of DR. That's crazy. And I don't care for the people who love it, like it, and want to do it. That's your business. I'm talking about the people that they force. The people whose hands they force. The people who they demolish to do this. Because to me, I feel like there should be a lot of people that are volunteering for this. So why do you need to force people's hand? Why do you need to pe force people's hand to do this stuff? The mortgage brokers, the real estate agents that try to demolish people. My own real estate agent right now is such a, a, a POS that he was supposed to text me information all day, all night. He never texted as soon as I hopped on the live at 1145. Now he's texting me. What are you texting me at almost midnight for? All of these people, all of these people, you come around me, you come in my energy, you come in my line of, of sight. You just put yourself in the line of sight of God, taking those dark deals. I knew exactly when that realtor took that deal too. I saw it in his face. I knew the same day he did. And I always do. I always do. I don't know if they promised him that he's going to get money out of this. Congratulations. You got your deal. You got your, uh, you got your house closed. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Any of us from back home, any of us from the Caribbean, well, not any of us, but you know, when God puts hands on people, how it looks, right? Like you could see it, right? Like people are not invincible, right? Listen, when I'm done here, I'm going to make sure, I'm going to make sure this man understands who I am just for the night. Because sometimes it's like, no, like my ancestors really got to put some hands on him for real. Because he doesn't understand English. He's crazy. He doesn't understand stuff. But anyways, let me post this tomorrow. And I, I always have to mention this. I don't care if people think I'm hateful. If I could only detail and outline to you how horrific the last year has been, how crazy it has been. And if I was not walking with God, I mean, step by step by step by step. Imagine all of a sudden you wake up and you're surrounded by this craziness. People following you everywhere you go, following you, driving behind you to work, driving behind home. And they, they do this to people all the time. But I didn't know that they, they did this to like regular people who are not involved in anything, who have no idea what's going on. I thought they did. You know what? The last time I, back in the day, they used to do this and they used to put GPSs under people's cars. I heard about that. Back in the day, they used to put GPSs under people's cars so that they could track them and follow them everywhere. And what they would tell people is, oh, such and such owes me money and they need to pay me back or whatever. Because somebody said to me back in the day, they were like, um, oh, there's this woman and her children, but the husband owes money and the husband isn't paying back. So they're just doing that to the woman so that the husband pays them back. And then so... Maybe that's what people thought that they were participating in, not knowing that they were terrorizing the living life out of this person. One of the ladies that came to my store is showing me some crazy surgery. Like, this is not a surgery done by a doctor. Like, it's like a stab wound, but like a huge one, like a long one. And I asked her where she got that from. I was like, is it a C-section? I'm like, what is that? And I'm like, was that from surgery or whatever? She told me she got this scar 20 years ago. And I go, um, what is that from? Is that plastic surgery or a C-section? She goes, no, I wish. I go, what is it from? And she never, she never answered me. So you can even think to yourself, back in the day, they used to force people to get surgery and slice themselves open to do this kind of stuff. And it's like, that's how they were forcing people to live. That's what they were doing. All these people coming in my life. You think I don't know what you people are on? You think I don't know who you people are? You people liking my pictures and doing the most in Toronto? You think I don't know who you people are? 
anyways, I'm gonna post it just on the um on the on the long shot that some of you guys were lied to. But I think some of you guys just did it for money. I think people just did it for money. And it is what it is. It's terrible. It's terrible that that you could do that to someone for money though. To destroy a person's life. If a person doesn't agree to make them homeless, you're heartless. You're heartless. You're not a person. Like you're not a human being. You're a monster. You're a monster to do that to, to families, to put people in that position. And I think a lot of people just end up agreeing because they are just terrified for their life. But you see this one, John Ferreira, he will not escape. He's not the only one that's not escaping. But God needs to make an example of somebody. So the witch doctor is getting witch doctored. We can't do nothing about it. We'll never be able to do anything about it. And, and, and this is not a... He told people I cursed him. Perhaps. We Okay, so if, if I did... What's anybody going to do? If you were the most feared witch doctor in Toronto and I could put a curse on you and now your life is going to shambles, what's anybody going to do to me? What's going to happen? Who's going to beat me? Be realistic. You don't want to accept the cycle of clothes. You don't want to accept that this is done. All right. You guys still have something that's mine though. So I'm not going to stop either way. Either way. And that's the thing about upsetting people that you call witches, right? You call somebody a witch and you upset somebody. And just imagine, you know, the worst witches are the ones that never stop. Imagine somebody or you see that they taught you a lesson and they just keep going. They just keep going. They just will not stop. No, no peace, no rest. No joy, no happiness, no money, no health. How much disorders this man has by now, we don't even know. He's collecting them like infinity stones and has the audacity to hop in my life. Don't let that thing you binded you yourself to give you ambition and ammunition to, to come in my life again. Don't. But anyways, let me go pray. Like they said, I'm praying dark prayers. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, for the girl who stayed in here to listen, have yourself a good night. <laughs> Hope my ancestors don't come in y'all dreams.